They've done it. They're in the Premier League. To the threshold of the Premier League. And the London legacy lives on through all walks of our lives. Notice or recollection of sport going back in history would have been back to the times of King Henry. Yeah. I think when I was about 12 and I was just lucky that they played it at my middle school. At school I did a range of sports and I was um, fairly sport mad. Rugby union, uh, soccer and sport was something that just made me feel good. And it wasn't until I was at um, university that London 2012 got announced and then it became less of a hobby and more of a job committed on to like the junior programme and kind of training began for London 2012. Sports started to get more organised. More and more people were moving away from the countryside, going into towns, working, having a bit of money. They also needed to have a social life. And sports started to become, if you like, part of that social life. It was a huge investment, financially. Sport to me is part of our life. It's a part of making people feel good and it's got to have a place for anybody. Russia's deeply rooted cheating culture has come to light over 11 months of investigation. Cycling is a sport with a drug problem. Courts recommend that Russia be banned from all competition, even from this year's Olympics in Rio. The history of steroids and drugs in sport goes back to ancient Greece. It doesn't even just go back to 1936 in Germany. It's always been an issue with people trying to get an edge and doing anything to do it. East Germany, obviously Russian as well. A lot of drug taking from the late 60s right through the 70s and 80s. I mean, a lot of people would say that Brazilian women are on drugs or like taking. There are lots of kind of um, signs that perhaps they were. It's becoming more public knowledge now. But it went out uh, from athletics. It started to come out in our media here through other sports and more recently um, Lance Armstrong. When it's gone into track and field, powerlifting, everywhere. Now it's in distance running. Uh, it is everywhere in the media. It can literally go from the back pages of a newspaper to the front. When sports people uh, behave in a way which uh, the press or others feel is uh, unreasonable and unsuitable, they can get cascaded. Times where you want to speak out, but you just know you can't in the media these days. I feel like that's a real shame that athletes actually can't really speak out because you know that they take the bad stuff and just write on a headline. Yeah, I had a, a situation where I was getting loads of um, like abuse and stuff on Twitter, like leading up to London, like um, from articles and things like that. So, um, and I couldn't handle it because I was just like, I don't want anything to do with it. And it just is going to take up lots of energy, which I can't afford. So, yeah. It does annoy you, yeah, it did annoy me a lot. It's tough. It's really tough. The discrimination, racism, this does, does not be in sport. Lots of sportsmen have this challenge. These days, the drug issue when I was younger was in sport. The steroid issue was in sport. These days, the steroid issue is down at the local gym. Uh, the IAAF, I was going to say allegedly, but it's been proven uh, widespread doping and support that doping of Russian athletes by the Russian government. I'm really surprised they got caught because in my view the thing that's changed is a realisation that the state has been involved in it. That is absolutely awful. Just as we've got with soccer with other types of allocation, how on earth are we going to make sure that in a world of 200 nations plus that we're going to get a proper level of, I call it democracy, but let's take it a step further, fair play and level play. I don't think at all like it's a waste of time. The feeling that GB had when they hosted London 2012 was amazing. Everyone was like so proud to be British. People were organising it. So many people are like, oh, I was a volunteer. They not only leave a legacy, but they also leave an infrastructure for the community. The atmosphere in a gym where everyone's equal, it becomes normal to treat people with respect. It's for everybody. It's for the whole of the country. Yeah, it's definitely made, opened my eyes to kind of the whole world, really. But since you play there and you know, you know that you've got all these life experiences, you do just feel a lot more like it's just self-confident. You know, I set a goal and I did achieve it. So, and I just think that's like such a huge thing. You can't buy that at all. If you want to do sport, do it. Not live and let live. It's live and let others thrive as well. That's where I'm at.